terminal. One fourteen. Ever since Jesus saved and pardoned, I have been singing every day. Praise the Lord, blessed holy name. Through the dark shadows, he is with me, leading me on the upward way. Praise the Lord, blessed holy name. Praise the Lord, blessed holy name. All the way, he's exactly the same. Every day. story praising him for his wondrous love praise the lord blessed holy name through the i know a home is waiting beautiful home in heaven above praise the lord blessed holy name My pathway brighter grow. Praise the Lord, blessed holy name. Through the island of sad repining, Jesus is with me. This I know. Praise the Lord, blessed holy name. Saturday, February the 4th, will be the men's prayer breakfast at 8 o'clock. Um, Sunday the 5th, the, there's a meeting in the Lady Sunday School class for anybody uh, who wants to help out with VBS this year. That would, that'll be at 5 o'clock before the evening service. 
Um, Thursday, the 9th of February, there was a ladies' meeting in the fellowship hall. Please bring finger foods and your missionary offering. And Saturday, the 11th at 5 o'clock, will be the Valentine's Day dinner in the fellowship hall. Please sign up. Sheet is in the vestibule by Sunday, the 5th. Is there anything else? No. No. Okay. And I believe we have a couple of birthdays. Uh, is it Kira's birthday? Is that right? From the truck? Kira's birthday? Not Kira. Kyle. Kyle. Kyle's birthday. Where's Kyle at? In a couple of days. In a couple of days. All right. Anybody else's birthday or anniversary? Levi's birthday is Wednesday. Was Wednesday. Okay. And Jay's birthday was last week. All right. So let's go ahead and say. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right, page 57. Let's sing that last verse one more time. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing. Shake your neighbor's hand and greet
everybody here this morning. It's good to be saved. We say that all the time because it's good to be saved. Amen. All right. Just looking up. Y'all won't notice it yet. It's Youth Sunday. They have taught a lot of the classes. Um, they're leading the singing, and they'll be singing here in a little bit. So I'm also proud for uh, Ben Aiden. They took the youth last night over to a youth meeting in Cleveland, Georgia. And I've done heard, how, I, me and Carol went Friday night. There was 10 kids saved that night. Some really good preaching. Um, man preached on, are you a pretender? Amen. And I also want to say this for y'all that missed Sunday school this morning. It was in our class. I didn't get to hear what kids were doing in the other classes, but in our class, Brother Dylan taught, and I don't never want none of y'all to say I preach a hard message because he preached, he taught a hard message. Is there a little bit of Judas in every one of us? And I was like, whoa, whoo. And yes, they is. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, that was the first time he ever taught a class. I felt like he done really good, and I was proud of him. Brother Dylan keeps studying. Keep drawing near the Lord. I'm thankful for our young people. We're blessed with the young people, all the way from the littlest to the oldest. I'm thankful for all the young people that the Lord has put in our church. I think we got the cream of the crop. Amen. So that sounds prideful. I'm, I'm just proud of the ones we got. Thank them. Thankful. Y'all keep on serving the Lord. I need two of my men to come forward. Let's go ahead and take up two of our young people. Come on, Connor. Go ahead and pray. Amen. Kids, come on, let's take up our missionary offering.
hardship and poor now can sing. Praise God, praise God, I'm a child of the King. Now I'm a child with a heavenly home. My Holy Father has made me His own. Now I'm cleansed by His blood, and I'm clothed in His love. And someday I'll sing with the angels above. Oh yes, oh yes. I'm a child of the King. His royal blood now flows in my veins. And I, who was wretched and poor, now can sing. Praise God, praise God. I'm a child of the King. A child of the King, His royal blood now flows in my veins, and I, who was wretched and poor, now can sing. Praise God, praise God, I'm a child of the King. and we must conform or we will be left by the change this new world religion serves the god of their choice but salvation still comes in one name that name is jesus sweet rose of sharon spotless and pure lamb of god jesus the Lion of Judah, the promised Emmanuel, God's Son. Jesus, my Lord and Creator, who witnessed and conquered the grave. Jesus, this world's only Savior. Jesus, what a wonderful name. All the great leaders who sleep in their graves One day will bow and proclaim He's the Lord of all glory, the crown king of kings All creation will thunder his name That name is Jesus Sweet rose of Sharon the Spotless and pure lamb of God Jesus, the Lion of Judah, the promised Emmanuel, God's Son. Jesus, my Lord and Creator, who witnessed and conquered the grave. Jesus, this world's only Savior. Jesus, what a wonderful name. That name is Jesus, sweet rose of Sharon, spotless and pure Lamb of God. Jesus, the Lion of Judah, the promised Emmanuel, God's Son. Jesus, my Lord and Creator, who witnessed and conquered the grave. Jesus, this world's only Savior. 
Jesus, what a wonderful name. Jesus, this world's only Savior. Jesus, what a wonderful name. proud of our young people. I done told you that and I'll be. Amen. Psalm 73. We've been knowing this meeting. I used to take my youth to it all the time. Been going to it for about 15, 16 years now. And um, so it's my son he goes to the church that is the one that puts it together. Brother Mark Strouds is the pastor. And so uh, I, when I used to take him, he'd be 13, 14, 15 year old. Now, uh, now he's the one leading the singing at it. And that's a, that's a joy to watch just in its own. But y'all have heard me testify before how uh, I used to have a prayer spot. Over in when I lived in Blairsville, down in down behind the wood, you have to go through the woods, and then an old field would be back there. <clears throat> and in the middle of that old field, it done started growing up, and there's little pine trees about 12, 13, 14 foot tall, just in two little sections. And I went in the middle of it and made a cleared out a little spot and made a place I'd go down there and meet the Lord. If you don't have one, you ought to try to get one. And it was just, I, you could pray anywhere, I know that. But sometimes it's just good to have a place. Yeah. And I, I was going down there for a while, and finally I took my boy down there one day. And uh, y'all have heard him testify. He said he didn't really want to go, but I took him down there anyway. We, we went down there and we prayed. He didn't tell me he didn't want to go, by the way. But I knew by his attitude, kids, you know your kids' faces. And uh, <clears throat> we just got down there and we prayed a little bit and then we come home. Well, Friday we went over to that meet and we left a little bit early to go down there to my boy's house and spend just a little bit of time with the grandkids. And so we got down there before the meeting. And Jacob come in and he went, got all dressed, got ready for the meeting. And he comes out and he says, Daddy, come with me to the field. I said, all right. And I thought he was going to show me where he put up his deer cameras and me planting a garden out there last year, so he was going to tell me he planted rice. So it, I thought that's what we was going to go look at. What do you think I need to do to get my garden ready? And we're going back there, and you go down the trail, and, and then it turns and goes across the creek. And as you're going across the creek, he's already done told me that he made a prayer spot out there. And sure enough, he keeps it mowed beside the old log where he bows down at. And instead of going toward the field, he took a left, and I knew where we was going. He bowed down at the log. I sat on the log. That's what, that's what you can do when you get old. And uh, I heard him praying, and I'm praying. Boy, I'm just, tears are just running. But I heard him say this in his prayer to the Lord. He said, Lord, my daddy took me to his spot. I wanted to take him to mine. <laughs> mm. It was good to be in my son's prayer place. What are you teaching your kids? You think, you think that you ain't teaching them nothing. You think they're not listening. You think they don't care. But what are you teaching your kids? One day you might get to walk down a trail, turn off to the left, and bow down at their little prayer spot. Be faithful, Mama. Be faithful, Daddy. 
It's worth it. You got one shot to raise that kid right. Do the best you can. Do the best you can. Amen. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Brother Tommy texted me this morning. He said, I'm coming with an empty bucket so that God can fill it. What did you come with this morning? Come with a praise on your lips. Come with a thankful heart. You're broken. Your bucket got a hole in it. It's all right. That happens sometimes. God can fix your bucket. He can give you a new one. He can change a stony heart. Give you a brand new one. I don't know what your need is this morning. But man, something ought to stir you to see young people sing about God. It ought to help you to see some young people wanting to worship. Amen. 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 Ain't, ain't it amazing we'll watch teenagers throw a ball and we'll stand up and act like an idiot? Yeah, come on. Okay, I will. I'm one of them ones that gets in. If I go to a ball game, I'm going to cheer. I'm going to blame the refs if we're losing. I'm going to blame the other team for cheating. I'm going to get in. I come to church the same way. I'm going to get all I can while I'm there. I, I need something. By some of y'all's faces, y'all need something. Hey, Amen. Brother Johnny feeling all right this morning? I'll be praying for Brother Johnny. Hey, Amen. Was Jacob all right this morning? Amen. Got Kenny and Hannah, they're sick. Be praying for them. Got a lot of people out today. This weekend is the weekend of when Brother Dylan passed away. They went off, be praying for them. Look around, there's a lot of needs. Amen. Miss oh, yes. Laura, every day God gives you an opportunity when, God, when, that, when, when the Lord lays that little baby in your arms. Every day is an opportunity to lead that baby to the yes. Lord. Every day. Take it and run with it. Amen. What are you doing, preacher? I'm just waiting on the Lord. Y'all don't forget. Don't forget how the Lord's blessed you down through the years. Don't take this day for granted. This is the day which the Lord hath made. You know what's lacking? We will rejoice and be glad in it. He done his part. It's a good day. Have we done ours? Truly, verse 1, 73 of Psalms, Asaph wrote this. Of course, smarter than men than me has tried to say Asaph hasn't wrote it. I'm just dumb enough to believe the Word of God. 
We don't know what Asaph it is. There's five of them in the Bible. Five different Asaphs. David did have two of them. One was a seer, which is an Old Testament word for prophet. And one of them was a singer. <laughs> which one wrote the psalm? It don't matter. You want me to tell you why? My Bible tells me that the Holy Ghost moved on men got in their little mind and said, you need to write some words. Okay. Laid his hand on top of their hand and wrote the words. So who really wrote it? The Holy Ghost. And he was just operating under the power of God, which is who he is. Then we also know that the Word is Jesus Christ Himself. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. I like what one writer said about he was, they was a talking and, and trying to figure out who, who, who wrote this. Was it really Asaph? Was it David? And Asaph just pinned it for him. I mean, or maybe David wrote it and he gave it to Asaph to sing it. And he says, all I know is one thing. It don't matter who writes the song it don't matter who sings the song. If it ever becomes real in your heart as you're singing it, it's your song. <laughs> There's times and I've been out there in my prayer place and I'm sitting there and I've done prayed and talked to the Lord and, I, and I don't, when I'm out there in that prayer place, I don't shut my eyes. Now when I'm in church and I'm around people, I shut you all out so I can get along with God. But when I'm out there with me and the Lord, I want to see all what the Lord has been blessing me with. I leave it open and we just have a good time of talking. But there's times, boy, that I get out there and I just start singing. And I mean, it's just like I wrote that song right to the Lord. It becomes me and the Lord's song. Amen. don't really matter who wrote it. Why they want to argue that, I just don't understand. But I do like the words that was wrote, that was written. Listen to that first verse. Truly. And I want you to notice that every single letter has been capitalized. He's trying to tell you that it's a big deal what he's fixing to say. He's trying to say what I'm saying is factual. There's not one hint of untruth in it. Truly, one writer said that it literally stands for only because he's the only one that can do what he said there. Amen. But he said these words. Man, I hope that you can see this and say this. Truly, God is good to Israel. Can I say it like this? Truly, God is good to Calvary Baptist Church. Can you say it like this and it would mean the same and it wouldn't tear up the Word of God? But truly, God is good to me. And God has been good to me. Say, Brother Tim, has every day been good? No. But God's been good every day. Uh, have you enjoyed everything that you went through in your life? No. But I can say God has been good in everything that I've went through in this life. There's some things that I've been through that I've questioned. There's some things that's happened to me that I go, God, why? But when I get past that spot, and I'm a couple of years down the road. I can turn around and say, God has been good through that spot. Yes, yes. Amen. Even to such as are of a clean heart. Yeah. Now if I want you to notice before we get into the rest of this, and we're just going to go as far as God wants to take us this morning. If we don't finish it tonight, today, we'll finish it tonight unless God sends it down another path. 
But I want you to notice that this verse, so that you will understand that this whole chapter is going to deal with something that man always has to fight and has to deal with. We all get in times in our life where we question what's going on, what's happening in our life, but he starts out, so he starts out this first verse, it's kind of like a movie. You ever watched a movie where they take about one to five minutes and it's at the end of the whole movie but it's starting at the beginning. And so, man, you see them over there praising or they're happy and boy, they're walking into their home at the start of this movie and they're walking hand in hand and everything's good and everything's great and walking into the church and then all of a sudden, I mean, into into their house, maybe the family is just happy and they're all holding hands, walking in and all of a sudden it stops and then it backs up about five years. And it shows all that they've been through and the problems and the, and, the, and then at the end, it takes them back to that where it started, where they're walking into the house all happy. Well, this is the same way. He has done been through it. He has done been through this chapter. And he's starting out that he has come to the conclusion that truly God has been good to me. But I want you to look where he's why he says that and where he's at. And now let, he now he's going to back up to the weeks before. And he says this. But as for me, my feet were. You understand? Now he's backing up. He's looking back at the past couple of weeks. He said, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. You ever been there? You ever felt like I'm just about to turn around and walk another way? I'm just about to slip off this rock that God has put me on. I'm just about to lose my footing. I'm just about to let go of my rope. I'm just about to leave the church. I'm just about to walk away from the faith. Just about. He says, but as for me, My feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. Listen, young people, you get a day like this, you get up here and you sing, you get to raise your hands, you just went to a meeting, Brother Ben, you and and Brother Aiden, you just went to a meeting where you got to worship, you got to pray, you got to see kids get excited, and some might have ran, some might have shouted, some might have got saved, some might might have got right, boy, you're on cloud nine. But there's coming some days. Your knees is going to get weary. Your heart's going to faint. Nothing seems to be going right. Hang in. Don't quit. Don't quit. The morning is coming. He said this. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw their prosperity, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasses compasses them about as a chain. Violence cover them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and they speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouths against the heavens and their tongues walk through the earth. Therefore, His people return hither and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. They say, How doth God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain, washed my hands in innocency, For all the day long have I been plagued and chastised every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against a generation of thy children. 
When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. I want to look at verse 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then understood I therein. Lord, this morning, help us to realize this morning that it's not about the outward appearance. It's not about the things of this world. It's not about the gadgets and the trinkets. It's not about having a good life. It's not about having a lot of friends. It's all about you. Lord, if we could ever get that deep down in our heart, that it's all about you. Man, we'd be so much better off. Help us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to talk a little bit. and It'll hit you too if you want to listen. I want to talk a little bit to the young people. All the way from Kira and Stanley, Jade, to the older ones. Fixing to be old men and old women. Ain't too far from it. If you could turn around and ask some of these older ones, some of these young people like me, and you'd say, and you'd ask them, has your life ever been hard? Is it always because you see them at church? I'll use Miss Glory since she's sitting right there, and you always see her like she's smiling. She's always the same. It's, It's like she goes through nothing. Her life is like this. I mean, just steady. And you think, man, she don't never have a problem. She probably ain't never went through nothing. She just... Mm, has it been hard? Has the road had rocks? Is there mountains that you can't climb? Is there people that just try to tear you down? Is there things that God hasn't given her? It's not been easy. Or maybe put something on her that's not... And it come from God. Miss Gloria, you ever had them? You know what I would know she would say? Oh yeah. Every one of them. There's been days that's been hard. You ought to take note... Because life ain't always easy. I'm telling y'all kids, life, you're not always going to get what you want. We live in a time to where parents and the world is trying to give kids everything. I watched just a little bit of news this morning. I had to turn it off before I got in the flesh. But they was talking about some schools in Tennessee that don't have stuff and and the reason why that the kids are not doing good is because they don't have. And so they asked for more funding so that they could get to be able to give. And sometimes, Brother Chuck, and I know you'll agree with me on this, sometimes the best way to help your kid is to say, no, you can't have it. Because life is not going to give your kid everything. And they're going to have to walk away from a mom and a daddy and an uncle and aunt and a granny and a grandpa that won't give Gibson and Henry and Elijah and and Andrew and Lizzie Grace everything. I walked in the other day at my house I seen FedEx drive off down the road and they is a box this big. And she opened it up and I just thought, boy, I'm going to get some new shoes, I'm going to have some new pants and a new tie. And we open it up and it's a blow-up dinosaur that spits water out. You can hook a water hose up to it. (laughs) They wasn't one dinosaur, they was two. I said, it's one of them for me. She said, nope.
Life ain't going to get you everything you want. Matter of fact, life's going to give you a bunch of trouble. And it's going to send you to your knees, I promise you. You're going to think you ain't going to make it. You're going to think life ain't fair. You're going to think God don't care. You're going to think God messed up. And why? Ooh. And why do they on the other side of the road get more than me? Why is it that my neighbors that are lost and on the way to hell, why does my neighbors get a new car every year? Why ain't they ever in the hospital? Why do they seem that their kids get everything? Why is it that they're always running around and laughing and partying and up over there? And me and my house, we barely making it from week to week. I'm working 60, 70 hours a week just to be able to pay a few bills. Why do they get it all and I get nothing? Why does he have perfect health and I got heart attacks? Uh, why do they get to go off and go on, uh, on all these vacations and trips? And Why do they get to go do all this? And we don't never get to go. Our nose stays on the grindstone. Uh, why does their kids have and my kids don't? If you ain't careful and if you don't learn some things about life in this life, what God has told us about this life, you'll quit on God. And Ben, you'll say, no, I won't. I've seen better than you quit. Dylan, I've seen people that know a whole lot more Bible than you walk away from God. I've seen marriages that separate because they seen other marriages that was better or the man saw another woman that was better than his. She'll treat me better than what I got now. What I'm trying to tell you is, you sit there and say, no it won't. Whoever Asaph was, he was a man of God and he was thinking it. He was fighting it. And before too long, you start saying it's God's fault. I can find a better church out there than this church. Their Sunday school teachers preach on tell me that I got Judas inside of me. I want you to notice the sanctuary. He said, until. Now again, you've got to remember now, he's telling the story. He's done, been through it. He's done on the other side of this thought. But this is what God was letting him know. The problem, son, is not the other people getting and you not. The problem is not that you're in pain and they're in happiness. The problem is not that they're seeming to have more than you or that they actually do have more than you. That's not the problem. The problem is, is you forsook the sanctuary of God. Now here's where some of y'all done went. The shallowness of our thinking. Everybody always preaches that we need to come to the house of God every Sunday and we're not going to get Well, one, yes you do need to go. But this verse here is not talking about a structure a building, a tent. This sanctuary of God that he's talking about here in this verse is not the tabernacle in the wilderness that Moses and Israel built that they could pick up and move with them where God would be in their midst. That is not the sanctuary of God here in this verse. It is not the temple um, that Solomon built with Israel's help that they built where God might be able to rest with them in Jerusalem. That's not what it... It's not talking about the, this building here that was built in 55 or 54. If I got it wrong, please forgive me. Uh, this is not the Calvary Baptist Church building that it's talking about. What it's talking about is uh, you getting in the presence of God in the third world up there. 
This is where you have set aside and put the world aside and the cares of this world where you put aside that the people on the other side of the road has got it better than you. And you get alone with God and you bow on your knees and you say, oh Lord, can you meet with me today? And it just so happened that the Lord come by your way sat down beside you in a secret place. This is the same place uh, where Satan showed up in Job chapter 1 and walked right into the throne room of God. God finally said, Why are you here, Satan? Have you considered my servant Job? Satan is in the secret place of God. John got to get there in in Revelation chapter 1 and he got to see it with a vision in chapter 1. Chapter 4 he's actually called up there but in chapter 1 he's out on the Isle of Patmos and he gets along with God and God lets him see the throne room. Oh yeah. Man. Isaiah saw it in chapter 6. Of Isaiah. When's the last time you've seen it, Aiden? Well, Jimmy, when's the last time you've been in the presence of God? Hey, another brother, Jimmy. Really, seriously, let your heart and your mind start thinking. But when's the last time? that you and the Lord visited one another. Brother David, Revelation chapter 3 tells us that Jesus is standing at each heart's door and He's knocking. Can I say this? Every saved person's heart, because He's talking to the church there. And he's knocking that you might be able to, he might be able to come in and sup with you and you with him. When's the last time that you've opened the door, Brother Will, and the Lord walked into your life and stirred your heart? Brother, you're talking about something I don't even know about. I ain't never been in that secret place where it's just me and God. You can. Your whole outlook on life will change if you can get into the sanctuary of God. A smile will come up on your face when God shows up. Oh, you might complain to Him a while. I've done that. Oh, you might not tell Him what you like is going on in your life. You might say that his thumb is too heavy on your heart. And Lord, would you let up some? You might sit there and say, God, why he's there? Why he's there? And you know he's there. I mean, you feel it. You know it. Your heart is about to bust because he showed up. And you sitting there and your heart's in another place. Your mind is in another place. And so, boy, you just pouring it all out. You being honest with Him. For too long, you'll see Him like He is. And your heart will start melting in His hand. He'll play with it some. Some tears will start flowing. Some joy will start bubbling up. All because you went in the sanctuary of God. All because you went, you went to the sanctuary of God. Yeah, women need to get there too. That's your boyfriend, right? He can get pretty aggravating at times, can he? Yeah. (laughs) 
Life don't always go like you like it, does it? And he's contrary to God sometimes, ain't he? You need to get to God more than you need to breathe. You need God more than you need Him fixed. You know what our problem is, church? We look at worldly things more than we look at heavenly things. Our affections has been set on the world and stood on heavenly things. We think about our wants and our desires more than we think about God's will. We enjoy a new truck and a new shotgun more than we enjoy His hand being on our back. We enjoy in walking in the things of the world instead of walking in the Lord's footsteps. And when that happens, God knows. And you know how God gets you back? You know how God gets you to get back to the sanctuary? You think He's going to come by and go, Here, have another blessing. Here, here's some big old, big old piece of cake. Here, here's, you've been wanting that all 50 more cows, Brother Chuck, put on your lot. You've been wanting a new tractor. And, a new barn, because I know the other one burnt down. That was Stevie's fault. And I know, I know. And, uh, and I know. I, I, you know. She should have known that you shouldn't have put that baler in there, being hot right beside the hay. She should have come out and said, you need to move. And she didn't. It's all her fault. We know. That ain't what he does, but Judd. See, because for some crazy reason, the more we get, the more prideful we become. The more we get, the less we want God. You say, that ain't true. Read Revelation chapter 3. The Laodicean church was rich in stuff. And they didn't know that they was blind and naked and wretched. Because they had too much stuff. So you know what God does? He starts pulling away stuff. Your van will break down. Your girlfriend will leave you because you didn't treat her right. Just seems like everything in your life is going wrong. And then He takes off the blinders and lets you see the lost people in this world. Yeah. They just seem to have no problems like I got. They don't seem to have no inner fight like what I got. They don't seem to control their tongue like I have to. They, they don't seem to do this, but yet they just keep getting and getting and getting. Does God not know? Does God not care? You know what it'll drive a lot of people to? Lord, what's going on? I don't understand it. Oh God, I need your help. Lord, I, I, I'm having a problem. Now some people won't. That's because them people has never known God. But for the ones, the saved, that know God and walked with God and know His touch, it drives them back to the sanctuary. 
That's why all my life, when I used to teach young people for 31 years, I wanted them to get a touch of God in their life. Not just to be saved. Aiden, I wanted them to be saved. But then I wanted them to have a touch of God. I wanted them to know. Uh, and when, when God come by and they, and they got touched for the first time, to me that's as much fun as watching them get saved because they don't know what to do. They're like, what's, what's, whoo! Uh, Brother Tim, man of God, whoo! What do I do? Should I testify? Should I testify? Yeah, I want to sing a song. No, I don't want to sing a song. I want to. And they just, they get that touch and boy, they're just so excited. It's like a new kid in the big old candy jar. Which candy do I want? What do I want to do? What do I want to get? And you can have it. What do I want? Amen. And, and I sat back as a Sunday school teacher, as, as the youth leader, I sat back and said, Lord God, pour it on them. Because I know once you get the touch of God, there ain't nothing satisfies you like the touch of God. It's better than drugs. It's better than alcohol. It's better than a new truck. It's better than a shooting a big deer. It's better than anything to get a touch of God. People say, you charismatic? You, you got a little bit of holiness in you? No, I just know what the Bible says, how I can know God, and how I can know His power, and how I can know His strength, and how I can walk with Him. I know what the Bible says. I felt what the Bible says. He's been there in my life like that. I just haven't read about it. I've experienced it. I got out there on my tractor where I'm a singing Amazing Grace so loud that they literally are laughing at me. My sister come out there one time. I was 17 years old. I'm out there on the Ford tractor at Daddy's and I'm plowing. And she said, you're out there singing Amazing Grace so loud the whole world can hear it. Said, I went and got Mom and Daddy and we sat out there and laughed and rejoiced. And so the ones that ain't never known God like that, it never drives them to the sanctuary, it drives them to quit. But the ones that's felt the Lord and knows His touch, knows His strength, His power, His grace, His mercy, it drives them to the sanctuary. The problem is, is we forget to go. Your kid, if it's twins, kids, just one, needs to see Mama get in the sanctuary with the Lord. One day a grandkid's coming. And that grandkid needs to see you in the sanctuary. Well, Jimmy, they just don't need to see you that you go to church. They just don't need to see you just tote a Bible. They don't need to see you just not cuss. And they, trust me, they need to. But they need to see you in the sanctuary of God. Mm -hmm. Your wife needs to see you walk in accidentally and see you in the sanctuary of God. She needs to see that. She deserves to see that. That's a real husband. Your kids, brother Judd, need to see you alone with God. You didn't intend it, but God used it. Because they know when your life is going through hell, they know it. And they're watching to see how daddy's going to be. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then, Understood I. Praise God. 
you get in that sanctuary, God will pull back them veils of the temporary and let you see the eternity. God say, you don't understand, Aiden. What you're dealing with is temporary. Let me open the veil of eternity. And you'll sit back there and go, Oh, oh, thank you, God. Thank you. Because when He does that, the first thing that you're going to look at is Him. Come, Piano Carol. Where? What is your eyes seeing? He says, For I was envious at the foolish when I saw. What is your eyes looking at? Temporary things? Are you looking at eternal things? What is your eyes seeing that's affecting your brain? That's affecting your thinking? That's affecting your emotions? What's your eyes on? The hurts? The pain? The storm? The trials? The disappointments? the despairs of life? Or are you looking at eternity? That one day, one day all this will be over with. And I get the glory with the Lord forever. What do you see? You need help? You're in despair this morning. You're beat down, beat up. You don't think life's fair. You don't think God's doing right. He's overstepped His bounds. Why don't you come down? Get along with God. And say, God, this preacher's talked about a sanctuary. I want to get there. Help me. Get into the sanctuary. Help that all these temporal things fall off by the wayside. All the hurts, all the pains, all the misery, all the seeming like I'm alone, I'm a failure, I'm a nobody. Lord, let me walk up into your presence. Lord, if not here, help me to find it at the house but I want to ask for it here. Because I'm serious, God. I want to find it. I want to get in it. I want to start here. I want it to spill over at my house. Would you please stand? Sing, Carol. Amen. Today I faced a mountain once again. Yeah, boy. It seemed so tall. I tried to climb it, but it seemed I'd surely fall. Amen. So I knelt and I called, Oh, Jesus. Yes, sir. Again, I felt His presence, His hand of mercy, lifted me just in time. Just in time. I want to thank Him. I want to praise Him. His grace has been sufficient and like before. One more time. One more time. Again and again. He's always standing 
by my side when the valley was low and the river was wide I want to thank him I want to praise Amen. him one more time Amen. looking back upon this journey since the day that I first met him <laughs> many times his love and mercy has rescued me so once again I come before him once again Amen. I'll stand to praise him for all his blessings the Lord has been so good to me. Yes, amen. I want to thank Him. I want to praise Him. Right. His grace has been sufficient. And like before, He's given victory one more time. Amen. He's always standing by my side. By my side when the valley was low and the river was wide. I want to thank him. I want to praise him one more time. Y'all ought, ought to find the sanctuary of God before the trouble hits. Yes. Yes. It'll help you when the trouble comes. Church, let me say it like this. Men, every once in a while, you ought to grab your wife's hand and lead her to the throne of God. Every once in a while, you ought to get out of your pew, turn around to your kids and pick them up. Or if they're a little older, grab them by the hand and say, come pray with me. And they're going to be like this. You say, yeah, please. Let's go pray. Mamas, every once in a while, you ought to grab your kids' hands and say, let's go talk to God. Wives, every once in a while, you ought to look at your husband in the house of God Grab his hand and say, will you go pray with me? Or will you go pray over me? Head to the altar. It's coming a day that God might call your spouse home and you ain't going to have that. You're going to wish you did. One day your kids is going to leave out of your little nest that you have built. You're going to wish that you have prayed over them more. You ought to, Daddy, every once in a while, you ought to grab your kids' hands. You ought to look at your wife and nod your head. She knows what that means. You ought to hold them by the hand. Start walking them to the altar. Say, preacher, I don't need the altar. I can, I pray with them at the house. And I say, amen. But your family needs the church altar. They need to know it's all right to be able to come at a young age. Amen. I want to thank you for being at the house of God today. I want to thank you for coming into this sanctuary of structure that is built. I want to thank you for being a part of our church if you're a visitor. Can I tell you when you leave during the week this week, get into the sanctuary of the Lord, just you and Him. Spend some time with Him. Thank you for coming. Anything else before we go? Anybody going in the hospital? Y'all, Miss Dot might not make it through today. If you got time, go visit her. Tell her you love her. If she's been a part of your life, if she's helped you in the last 40, 50 years being faithful to this church, you ought to go by and see her. 
Tell her you love her. Tell her thank you for being faithful. So, anything else? Brother Donald, close us out in prayer.